good afternoon good evening okay so i think we were left yesterday with the bivariate and multivariate normal right so uh, we have seen how to find the joint densities uh, of bivariate normal or, or we have seen like uh, the inner transformations of this normal uh, random variable right today we are going to see uh, parameter estimation uh, maybe gaussian mixture models and uh, some of the uh, law like uh, inequalities right which leads us to uh, your our favorite theorem which is central limit theorem right in probability okay so i think this is uh, like one hour session uh, today because uh, some of you are having uh, i think after uh, some sessions after five right or maybe bdm viva or something is there so tomorrow again we'll meet around four o'clock uh, for one one and a half hour let's try to see some problems tomorrow okay one more thing guys uh are you guys uh, comfortable with kkt uh, conditions for constant optimization sir i am not okay so uh maybe in uh, one of the you know revision sessions what we'll do is uh, we'll solve the problems from kkt conditions right okay so let's start this what we have seen yesterday all of you are okay with this right Sir, uh, can you just means whatever things that you derive for general equations, right? Mm -hmm. So can you just write them down uh, when you start today? Means just for the yeah. Okay, so I think uh, we we haven't seen properties also, so maybe we'll mm -hmm. see that also. Okay, fine, that is okay. Uh, what we have seen is okay. I will just write down everything once. Transformation of random variables. Uh, I no need to recap. I guess I, that is fine. So. This is uh, okay. Bivariate and multivariate, on, right? That is what we have seen. Uh, it is totally dependent on normal random variables. Okay. So initially, what we have seen is uh, all the all all the uh, random variables we are having, they are from uh, standard normal. No. Uh, right, all of them are standard normal variables. Okay, so they are coming from normal distribution. So suppose we are having uh, this d-dimensional or uh, d such normal variables. All of them are what? The important condition is they are independent, right? They are independent to each other. What we have done is we have uh, we will make or we have arranged them in a vector format, right? This is Z1, Z2, and Zd. So all of them together, we say it's a Z vector, right? What will be the uh, joint density then? Fz of Z. Okay, this is uh, it's, it's just a product, right? Because they are independent. We have we know that uh, f x y. The joint density of fx y will be what? fx of x into fy of y when when x and y are, are independent. independent, right? So if you have uh, d such independent uh, variables, in that case, what will be the joint density? E to t, right? Equal to one to one to d. Two d. One of, one and two since uh, all of them are coming from same distribution so i can safely write one upon root two pi or uh, two pi e to the power minus half z i square right because mu is zero and uh, sigma is one sigma is one sigma so is one. so this is uh, the density or finally i can say that it is one upon two pi to the power d by two e to the power minus half norm square, norm norm square. square. right this fine so this was uh, one of the important, I will say. Uh, then we have seen the linear transform. Which one we will use I mean, in general? Second one or the first one? Both are same, right? Hmm. Both are same. So linear transform of two uh, two dimensional normal 
right that means we have seen only uh, we have taken only z1 and z2 and i have arranged that in this format x1 equals to z1 so this is the transform random variable which is x1 is z1 and x2 is what row z1 plus row z1 plus 1, one minus root under 1 minus row z1 and row is belonging from like this uh, minus 1 to 1 in that case what we have seen is uh the density of or i'll say that, okay so here i'll say that uh joint density fx of x so here x is what x1 x2 right it's also mm -hmm. a vector so in this case fx of x will be what uh, uh okay one one thing to write here is one upon two pi right root of one minus yeah. row square correct root of e sigma square right sigma square uh determinant okay, of okay that is fine that is also fine uh, so i'll i'll say root of determinant of sigma determinant of sigma right determinant of sigma into e to the power half. minus half uh if i wanted to write in this format then uh, let's say I'll, I'll write in this format right x x transpose uh, x transpose sigma, sigma inverse x correct so x transpose sigma inverse x right and where uh x is okay i'll write down maybe i'll write down here so so here x is x1 x2 right this is a vector sigma is what a a transpose or or in in vector format it should be this right a square row a b row a b and row a b square b square right because this is a covariance matrix right and they should be positive definite okay uh then if if uh let's say if and here uh actually x was X was written in this format, right? Like X was written as A Z, correct? Right, right. X was written as A Z, and then I have found out this density. Mm. I know what is A. A A was uh, one zero row uh, row root of root of one minus row square. Right. So suppose uh, X is A Z plus mu. In that case, what is the density? density is uh, the 1 upon 2 x, pi x, x, uh, root of root of, root of, sigma. of sigma e to the power minus half x minus x mu transpose power, minus half yes x minus mu transpose, transpose sigma inverse, inverse x, x minus, minus mu. instead right? of x we put x minus mu right so this is like shift we, we have uh, done the shifting here right okay by some that constant Fine. Uh, so then, this is the second second linear transformation that we saw, right? Yes. Is at plus mu. Yeah. So that is there. Uh, one more thing is uh, a multivariate. So for multivariate normal, what will be the density? Two pi to the root. Two pi ah. to the power d by two. Yeah. Correct. But that's d it, right? Yeah. So in that case, f x of x will be what? And here x is equals to a z plus mu. But remember what is x? x is a vector, right? Yeah. A is a matrix. Yes. A is matrix. What about z? z is also a vector and mu also a vector. Vector. Right. So in that case, uh, fx of x will be what? So fx of x will be 1 upon 2 pi to the power d by 2. D by 2. Uh, root of uh, root of determinant of sigma, sigma into the power, power minus half x, x minus, minus mu, mu transpose sigma inverse sigma inverse fine sir these formulas will be given or we have to remember them uh okay so this is not given actually uh in the quiz paper so you have to remember but mostly, see, uh, it's not that difficult, right? Like, you just have to remove. This is important. Otherwise, 
i think this part is fine right uh, but okay let, but there are properties of multivariate normal which are most uh, mostly useful so you can remember those properties uh, right? rather than remembering this this also uh, it's not uh, like if you if you remember this one density right mm -hmm. then i think uh, it's enough to understand everything right like you can just directly uh, take it to multivariate normal okay in that, the, hmm. so absolute one, value of sigma is just determinant there yes okay this is determinant of sigma okay this is determinant of sigma so what is the expectation of x here it will be mu okay yeah it will be mu what is covariance sigma sigma uh, which is nothing but a transpose uh, and this x is what x is how how it is distributed it is normally distributed mu. with there's a mu and the sigma so mu and sigma but what uh, what is the dimensions of mu it's it's a d vector d, yeah d cross one vector uh, and what about dimensions of sigma d cross d d cross d right fine this is okay until this uh, we have studied uh, we have seen yesterday next part is uh, the properties of multivariate normal properties of so sir can you give us an example uh, yes. and the question yeah. yes yes Please yes from this topic yeah i will see that so uh, maybe we'll see the uh, questions tomorrow uh, we'll finish the theory part first today uh, that because I think we have we have to complete that parameter estimation, right? Hmm. Uh, so we'll we'll finish that and we'll take the example. It's not. Sir, here A is the initial matrix that we got initially. Yes, A was uh, this matrix, right? Uh, based on the transformation. Yes, yes. This matrix, so, hmm. right? Okay. So in I mean, so you were saying something like covariance with sigma. Someone said no. Yeah, so, covariance is sigma, and uh, you you just you don't have to find anything else, right? Like you just have to find uh, once the transformation is given to you, mm -hmm. uh, you have to form uh, like formulate a first as the matrix, mm -hmm. and then you just multiply a transpose to that, you'll get the sigma. Okay, correct, right? Mm -hmm. A transpose you can easily find out, so you can find out uh, covariance easily. Mm -hmm. It was just like. Uh, uh, that is no uh, earlier we saw some covariance matrix was there right uh, this where is covariance matrix diagonals were variance and uh, of diagonals were covariance ah uh, correct correct so th that is also this only uh, okay. eventually it will come like that so it's the same thing so okay. once you find out a transpose right whatever mm -hmm. matrix you get uh, that is like that will variance be of x1. yeah covariance of x1 x2 x1 x2 this covariance of x1 x2 and this variance of x2 so if you find out a transpose you can directly say that this is variance of x1 this is variance of x2 uh, these two values are covariance of x1 okay, x2. Sir. got it and this distribution will be for x right yes this distribution will be uh, for x but what if uh, we want to find the distribution of y because i have seen one question why where we need to find it why is what why is what here it's also normal no, no but what is why here we have x1 x2 no what do you mean by why i miss where we have involved actually the... there were two linear transformations given and ah. we had this fx of x okay so it just asked what is the um, distribution of y Maybe there was x2 it is x1 y uh, so the, yeah so you can think of this x1 as one transformation and this is y right like let's mm -hmm. say x, x equals z1 and it's y mm -hmm. you have to solve that by uh maybe week 11's concept right we have, hmm. we have seen that week 11 concept right okay maybe we'll, we'll solve the problems uh, after that you guys will be able to hmm. correlate everything right hmm. okay so suppose x is normally distributed with mu and sigma 
okay this is multivariate normal uh, multivariate normal variable in that case the first property is suppose y is equals to a transpose x okay this is a new random variable y which is a function of this x multivariate normal fine and what is a here a is a constant vector okay here a is a constant vector and if you are if you are asked to find the distribution of y then what will be the distribution of y it's also a normal normal distribution and uh, with uh, what should be like if by looking at this you can understand like you can tell me what what should be uh, its mean does it get multiplied by a, a transpose yes. correct a trans because it's a constant vector right so it's a uh, it's it's simple right like expectation of y is equals to expectation of a transpose x which is nothing but a transpose expectation of x uh -huh. a transpose mu right the basic okay. Uh, yes, our yes, property. Yes. So, is correct. What about the variance now? Variance is a little bit tricky, but uh, yeah, just try try to find it out. Like, so, actually, here you have not considered x as a standard normal distribution. Uh, this is x is this right? A any any distribution any multivariate normal. multivariate normal with. Uh, mu is equals to d cross one vector and sigma is d cross d vector. I mean, it is not standard normal. Mu is not equal to zero. No. And yeah. No. 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 It's not standard normal. It's a combination of standard normals. Okay. Right? Okay. Ah. Okay. Okay. The the distribution we have seen yesterday, no? The, the we have found out the density of this. But if all the distributions are uh, uh, standard normal, the mu will be zero, right? Of the Final that model. is what we have seen yesterday. Uh, it is yeah. not zero, correct? Oh, it is okay. not zero. Yeah, right. we have, we have started with that, right? Right. right. I think okay. we have we have discussed about that also. Like why it is not uh, why should, it shouldn't be zero. Here also we have thought about it, right? While finding out the density, it is not going to be zero. Yes, yes, yes. E right. Even if because we are multiplying it, right? We are multiplying uh, the distributions there. And, you, right, right. It, it cannot be zero. Like uh, uh, even if it is addition, then you can say for multiplication you cannot say. Right. Right, right. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, what about okay? What, where we are uh, in this case? What will be the variance of y then? And with that multivariate normal distribution, uh, this y is what? It's a function of x. Correct, no? Yes, yes. Uh, and in that case, yeah. So now, what is variance of y? Oh, uh, variance of a transpose x. So it will be variance of let's say uh, then what? Should, what it should be? Variance of a transpose x. Okay, so look, suppose it then has it be the a, constant of x. A, a, a transpose square into x. It should be like that, right? Yes. Uh, and what was the variance of x actually in this case? Sigma. Sigma. But you cannot write uh, a transpose square, right? Yeah, it should be so, a transpose a. A transpose a. So this will look like this. Fine. Oh. Okay. In 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 vector format, this will look like this or matrix format. Fine. Right. But it is basically the same thing what we used to do in our like basic probabilities, right? Or basic expectation uh, for this. Okay. Mm. So this is so these are the properties which are important. Mostly the questions will be coming from that uh, properties. Okay. So we remember. Uh, so what let's say sup suppose second is y equals to b x. Okay. And b is some d by d matrix. B is d cross d matrix. Suppose. What what is the dis difference between a? Uh, a is a vector. A is a vector. A is a vector. Vector means that is also sort of a matrix, right? Yeah, but it is like uh, d d cross one dimensional vector, right? Right. Otherwise, no, not much difference, but it's a vector, and you can like here it is a matrix, so the calculations will be different a little bit. Okay. So what will be the expectation here? Is it same thing? B into mu. B into mu. Mu. So normally distributed B into mu, correct? What about uh, the variance? 
this will be b transpose sigma b uh, b transpose or b sigma b transpose same thing or it's a different thing d d cross d right transpose can be anywhere is it is it or or is it like this this will be same right b b, b transpose or b transpose b will be different or same uh, it is d cross d matrix mm, value will come differently i think yeah. so uh, here you uh, redistribution will look like this okay why there is a change like this uh okay so we will see okay maybe maybe we'll see one problem and we'll uh, so let's say in in one of the cases like let's say y is distributed like this y is distributed like normal uh zero okay and, uh sigma where sigma is this a square rho a b rho a b and b square okay okay and suppose i am taking this example from the lecture itself so suppose one uh, diagonal matrix is given 1 upon a 0 0 and 1 upon b instead of this b it can be any other b but uh, if you have taken this what will be the distribution of y n this will be 0 n okay. yeah so it is 0 0 and it will be a vector right okay so basically it's a vector here also it should be a vector Okay. Zero, zero. And what about this? So let's try to solve this. So it is, let's say, if it is B sigma B transpose, we'll try to solve that. Zero AB sigma will be A square. Rho AB. Rho AB. Rho AB and B square. Here it is. This uh, transpose will be same in this case. Ah, right. So in this case, actually, uh, doesn't matter, right? Like, uh, yeah, we cannot understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. And sir, uh, how are you finding the value of u? Mu, I, I already in the in the problem, it's given already that it's zero zero. Not a mu. Uh, is it mu or is you? Which one? Okay. So, so the formula is. Uh, Uncle, this was the formula for finding the distributions. This is the formula why. Uh, no, this is given. Uh, so okay. a transpose a transpose mu is it, no? This one, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mu. And mu is this one, d cross one. Mean. Okay. Okay. Right, right? Fine, right? So if I'll, I'll rub this one, maybe. <laughs> so uh, actually, basically, this both properties are the same. Only a difference here is uh, it's a vector here, A transpose. So A is a vector of uh, scalar values, maybe, or constant values. And here, B is a matrix. Okay. Mm -hmm. the otherwise uh, you can see that uh, both are actually same okay mm -hmm. so uh, now if i wanted to find so if but the b and b transpose which is i mean b and b transpose which is for the variance I, th I think or no i'll i'll have to check because uh, maybe you, you can check in the uh, lecture itself maybe i'll give the clarity on that it it doesn't switch also I, if I, I don't think it if it switches also it will have the impact or not because mm -hmm. sigma is uh, uh, positive definite and uh, this, you know, what is it? Uh, this B can be anything? Like it will B can be, be, B can be anyway. Uh, this any also matrix. will be like diagonal only like that? No, 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 no. There is no condition on B. No condition on B. If can it is anything, then it will change, right? It, it, it can be anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. it can mm -hmm. be anything. So, okay, I'll, I'll check on that. Uh, mm -hmm. But basically you have to find out so if you uh, do the calculations, we'll get the value here for the, so basically it is coming out as one, one row, 
So it is again going to be a symmetric matrix. So mm -hmm. that is why I just wanted to check. Uh, okay, I'll check. I'll check on this and uh, let you know. Okay. Third one. No means that is sig became sigma, is it? See this one, uh? Yeah, this entire thing is sigma. After doing the calculations, you get will get this one. So, are we saying again we will get sigma back? Which one? Okay, sigma. Sigma is this sigma is different, huh? No, it was the original sigma, right? Which no. we switched. original was different, right? The covariance matrix was this form only, right? Is it the covariance matrix? Okay. Of okay. Covariance matrix is what? Uh, nice. One row, row one, right? I yeah. think because this B is a diagonal matrix with only, uh, like, we have changed the scales, right? Mm. That's why. But, but, uh, one minute, one minute, one minute. Uh, I think here, I have taken sigma different, right? Here. In this case. Uh. I have taken the generalized sigma, correct? Okay, okay. A square okay. row AB, row AB, and B square. And after doing the calculation, because here, this was the sigma. This was B. This was right, right, right. Transport. Yes. So this this is some different uh, matrix, right? Another matrix. Yeah. Not, the, uh, not that one. Okay. Hmm. So third property will be, let's say, if Xi... Sir, if uh, in this case and all, when when, some, when we are talking about variance, it is only a matrix. Variance will be in the matrix format because it's not a variance; yeah. it's a covariance mm -hmm. matrix. Uh, why this is okay. there covariance because matrix. correct? Right? Why, why this is there because uh, you are not dealing with a uh, single normal, right? We started with multiple uh, normal variables, so they will have their own variance. As well have as well as they are having some covariance with the another uh, normal distribution, right? Because we have started with this. Z one is normal distributed zero one. Z two is normal distributed zero one. So if it is there, then they they uh, their own variance is what one, one right here. Yeah. But they they have some covariance between them, Each. Yeah. Right. and that will translate to the. Uh, the new random variables, the linear transforms of the random variables, which are actually uh, we have formulated by this, suppose. So their variance will be different and their covariance, right? Here, they will mm -hmm. be different. So anywhere, like if you, if since it is a matrix form, it will always come in the matrix form, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, be when we saw every variance and uh, in the statistics one, we just used to deal with only single random variable, right? Which was yeah. having some mu and sigma square. That's it. Right. So okay. we don't need the covariance here. Because it's yes. a single. How can it have the covariance? Mm -hmm. It can have the variance with itself. Variance is actually the covariance between these two, exactly. right? Yes, yes. Right. So basically it is a covariance only. But since mm -hmm. we don't have uh, more than one random variable, uh, that will actually translate to variance one. Mm. But when we have multiple random variables, then we will have both. You will we not get a real value. Yeah. Basically, covariance matrix is what? Uh, it is actually a variance or covariance between that each, each right? X1, X1, then covariance between X1, X2. Right, right. right. Same thing. So we'll always get the covariance matrix there. Okay. Sir, uh, this B will be given to us or we need to... No, B, B will be given to you. So uh, basically for this kind of problems, uh, you, you are, uh, the, the given things are, let's say, will be given that, uh, let's say, X is having this, uh, it is distributed like this, suppose, suppose normal, zero, and some sigma is given, okay? Then we are we are going to be told to find y uh, find the distribution of y okay find the distribution of y uh, given that there is a vector so or given that y uh, is a function of x like this and a is some vector let's say one two 
right? Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll solve the problem. Sir, here, I encountered this type of question, but uh, there it was not mentioned y is equal to a transpose. That format was not mentioned. Hmm. Uh, Maybe you can tell me the question. We'll try to solve that. Also. Right now? Yeah. Ah, right now, it's fine. So suppose I will take one example here. Suppose uh, this is uh, one. So one four, uh, maybe four and let's say two two, right? This format is fine, right? Covariance because it should be in this format. Then it becomes zero, right? Determinant is it positive definite? A square B square, okay. So A B and A. is it is it, it going to okay. determinant will become zero, right? Yeah, yeah. So we should change something. Let's say uh, three three. It will become three, minus. Three also, okay, three three also is not going to be possible. What's one one? One one is fine, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So suppose this is given and A is sure. like this. What will be the uh, what will be the distribution of y? Y will be zero. Mm -hmm. And uh, a times a transpose sigma a. So it will be one two. Sigma will be one 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 four, and a will be one two right. So yeah. if I try to solve this, uh, that is three. This point is nine. Two cross two, two cross two, two cross one. So three and nine. Two, three nine, and here is one two. Yeah, two. So this will become. 21. Zero, 21. There is a, a question. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. If the, there are values, then we will get the real value. Actually. Correct. Right. Right, right. Hmm. It will not be a matrix. You'll it will not be. You will get the matrix in when you will have this B. Right, right. Sure. Yes. Can I share the screen and you can copy the question or should I? Or paste, paste the question in the chat box. Huh? Uh, I can't paste it, sir, because uh, means it is uh, means I can't copy it actually. That's an image actually. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe uh, you can share the screen. Okay. It's fine. This is the question, sir. I was not able to do this. Okay, so x is given. Uh, so x is actually a vector, right? X one, x two, x three, and it is normally distributed with mu sigma, where mu is this and sigma is uh, that matrix. Mm -hmm. uh, if y equals to b x, where b is this, then find the distribution of y. Uh, we have seen the property, right? Uh, we we have to use the same property. So Okay, so can you tell me the values? Okay, I'll solve this. Okay. Uh, so x x is x one, x two, x three. Just I will just. You can even copy paste this question, right? What is x? X is x one, x two, and x three. With normal mu sigma. Uh, as I think in this question, uh, is uh, we need to finding the eigenvector? No, no, no. No, you don't have to find that. <laughs> this is like uh, you have to find yeah, distribution yeah. distribution of the random variable, the new yeah, random but, variable. Yeah, but how are we finding the value of a then? Which, because which, the equation is y is equal b to b is two. that a b is that a b x yeah. no so b is a matrix. Huh, that is given to you. Sigma so, is also okay. given to you, and mu is also given to you. Okay. Okay. Ah, one so minute. Mu, I yeah, mu. I don't. Because um, B can be some uh, not a square matrix, so hmm. B has to be on the other side, is it? Yes. Two five one. One minute. And I'll just uh, write down all the question and sigma is equal to. Five two minus two, five two is two. Uh, two six three, 
I have seen these type of questions in last three terms actually. No, you can expect this kind of problem. So uh, okay, two zero one, sorry two uh, zero one and zero three one. Hmm. So it's nothing but like we have to solve this. Uh, here it is. So this is three cross three. This is three cross two. We will get three cross. Two right here. Three cross two here. Three cross two means uh, ten minus two, eight. Six minus two, four right. Hmm. Plus three. So then eighteen plus three twenty one. Minus four plus eight plus four. Nine plus eight seventeen. Here it is two zero one zero zero three one. So again, you get two cross three, and this is three cross two. So you get two cross two. Sixteen plus four twenty. Uh, eight plus seventeen twenty five. Both these two will be same, no? Diagonals will be same. Yeah, yeah, correct. So you can check it like twenty one plus four is twenty five. Because basically it's a covariance matrix. Covariance matrix, yes, I figured it out. Uh, twenty forty. It's eighty, sir. Huh? It's eighty. So that's your answer. Hmm. That's it. So it's okay. not. Okay. This is why we do it, huh? Twenty twenty-five, twenty-five, eighty. Mm hmm. I thought it uh, means I followed like SVD and got the answer, no, but no. I knew that it was not the right approach, so I asked you. SVD, uh, I like here is no. Uh, like SVD is what actually? It's a singular value. Kind definition. of like, kind of like. Means not. I am not saying that it's an SVD, yeah. but approach here. Uh, everything is listed, right? Uh, means B, B transpose, and sigma is also given there. So I just followed that uh, path. Hello, Kunandu. Hello. Could you solve the question? Hello. Uh, question. Can you solve this, sir? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can share the screen to everyone. Uh, I'll just stop for some time. I'll just let let them see. Question. It's a previous year question. Okay, I think it's uh, previous. It's last time. It's last time. Last one. Okay. Twenty fourth December.
Can you see? Okay, thank you, thank you. Can I stop sharing? Yeah, yeah, I'm done. Okay. Okay. So basically, uh, an SVD is what SVD is actually. You try to decompose the matrix A into three uh, specific oh. matrices. Yeah. yeah. So, but properties is almost similar. Means properties okay. feel similar. So that's why I use that method. But I know that is wrong. Okay. So. Uh, Okay. This is clear, right? So I think yes, sir. we have discussed. Uh, so maybe is it, is it okay? Let's uh, move towards you know uh, parameter estimation. But yes, sir. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay. I think today also we are just almost like forty minutes. We have discussed on the but okay, that part was important, so it's fine. So let's. Uh, is some parameter estimation problems or parameter estimation. What is parameter estimation? So this is again uh, another big topic. So suppose X is let's say distributed with Bernoulli 0.5. Okay. So what is the parameter here? 0.5. 0.5, right? That's the probability parameter. of success, right? Yeah, this is the probability of success, and that is the parameter here. Okay, mm -hmm. so most of the time we have seen uh, this value is given to us, but uh, from where it is coming from, or uh, we don't know, right? Like, so suppose, like, for giving you some example, is let's say uh, I am saying that there is a class, okay, and uh, in a class, there are let's say 50 students are there, and I can say that okay, the 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 marks of the students are uh, actually uh, they are distributed. Suppose x is a random variable which represents the marks of the students in the class. In the class, okay. Let's say they are random. Uh, they are distributed uh, with normal. Suppose uh, five comma. So what does it mean? They are distributed with mean five. equals to five, and let's say four. Instead of four, I'm saying uh, uh, like two. I'm saying four. This is a variance. So here, these are the two parameters which are very important to define a distribution, right? What does these two parameters give me? They give me uh, the shape of the distribution, also. Uh, right, so uh, if if I by looking at this, I can actually able to understand what is happening there. Right, so when I say uh, probability of Bernoulli, let's, let's say x is distributed with Bernoulli 0.5 for any event, I'm sure that okay. Uh, so there is a probability or there is a chance that 50% uh, of the time, let's say rain will occur on a it on a particular day. Right, or that means there is a chance that 50% of the time the rail will not occur. Similarly, when I say x is uh, exponentially distributed with uh, suppose some 2, what does that give me? From this actually, I can uh, uh, I, I can tell that what is the shape of the distribution, what is the, uh, how the distribution will look like, right? So uh, shape in the sense, uh, when I'm saying this, that means. So exponential distribution is like this, right? It is then become a sim like uh, asymptotic to this, right? And this is let's say it's what uh, probability, right? So how can I get this shape? Shape of this distribution by the parameter. Uh, yeah, by the parameter. Uh, and how how will I get that? Because uh, I from this parameter I can able to find out the expectation of x variance of x, right? And then yes. I uh, by by seeing those properties I can actually draw distribution, right? So these parameters are important. But how 
this 2.55 and 4 is coming do we know every time that uh, uh, the value of this parameter so suppose uh, there is a big population right and if i wanted to uh, suppose you wanted to do a survey so simple example that election is going on so you uh, you, you wanted to see how uh, this election will go on, like or maybe who will be not something like that right in this case the population is very large right correct so yeah. in this population in this large population can you uh, confidently say that uh, this the whatever like whatever distribution it will follow uh, it will follow with certain parameters suppose i say that uh, the the person who is going to become pm or someone like uh, uh, the chances is that much let's say 80 percent 20 percent this parameter right so suppose x being a person uh, and what are the chances or it is or this distribution is uh, let's say it's a Bernoulli distribution with some parameter p right how to determine this parameter p so to get this parameter there is one way is to uh, go for the go and check like take the data from entire population and find the value of that right correct right. right. but this right. is possible only when you have limited amount of population if it is infinite infinite or as a the large like huge number of population where i cannot go across and uh, take the all the values in that case what i'll do is i'll Simply. collect a sample right i'll collect a sample mm -hmm. and i'll uh, by using some mathematical methods or models what i'll try to do is i'll try to find the parameter of the population correct and one of the techniques is what the maximum likelihood method correct yes so yes. In, yeah so in maximum likelihood what we'll do uh, i'll collect the sample from a same same distribution right there was one more method right in stats too yeah it was method of moments that uh, is not covered here uh, yes actually three methods were there one is bayesian estimator uh, method of moments and uh, this maximum likelihood maximum likelihood uh, estimator right. Maximum likelihood uh, will closely be related to Bayesian, I'll say, because mm -hmm. in Bayesian, what we'll have is uh, we use the base theorem, right? Where likelihood mm -hmm. prior and uh, posterior, posterior will, uh, from that, we'll find out the posterior. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. in maximum likelihood, we'll just try to find out the parameter only by using the likelihood function, right? So, this is the only one that we need to focus, focus in MLF. Yes. Okay. So as yesterday, someone was saying that, right? Like how to collect, like connect all the dots going forward, so that so that's why we need all this, uh, you know, all these things collected together and try to provide this. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll collect uh, these samples, and these samples are drawn. These are all IID samples, right? Uh, these okay. are like IID samples. What is? What do you mean by IID? Independent, independent, and identically distributed. Right. Means independent. they will have same distribution. Yeah. So what mean? What does mean? What does it mean? It is coming from the same distribution, and what we are saying that uh, x one will not have any effect on x two. Right. Mm -hmm. Whatever yes, value right. x one is taking here uh, is not going to be the same as that of x two. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right. So x one, x two, all these are random variables, right? X one, x two. Uh, x1, x2 are the random variables or the samples? Samples. Okay. Right? Samples. Okay. Right. Okay. And they are coming from the same population, which is here. Let's say p theta. Hmm. Then how to? Uh, so the the parameter p is basically coming from p theta, where theta belongs to same population, the big theta. Hmm. Okay. And we need to find. Uh, or we need to estimate because it is estimation right it is not the true value of theta it is an estimate for true theta right so now uh, what is likelihood likelihood of theta is nothing but probability that this one will belongs to x1 x2. so x2 will take the value x2 to x1 
given it is coming from same theta and this is nothing but what product of say marginals no yes marginals x y of right so i kind of miss this like uh... When we are when we are starting from x one, x two, x n are drawn as IID. Huh. These are the samples. Yeah, it so will take. It what will is p theta? P theta is uh, some population. You say okay. this is a population. It is drawn from some population. Okay. These are all random variables x one, x two to x n. These are the samples, and uh, uh, I think you have gone through that sampling and sample thing, right? In side okay. two, maybe you guys haven't remember this now. But okay, so basically these are the samples, and we uh, we are trying to find out. This is the likelihood. This is likelihood just basically what it's a product of these values, right? Uh, and to like how how we maximize any product of the individual density is it uh, probability is it? Yes, yes, yes. Because they are all uh, so basically it's like uh, suppose this is Bernoulli. Or maybe so, let's say not Bernal. Let's take some other example. Uh, suppose it is exponential. Okay. What is the uh, probability or P PDF? Lambda, 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 lambda to the power minus lambda. Right. Lambda right. Lambda right. Lambda and for x, all x greater than zero. So for each x i, what will be the uh, PDF? It is lambda one. Or maybe because it is coming from the same distribution, but let's say it is lambda. Uh, I'll say because the lambda, it when it is coming from same distribution, that means this lambda will be the same for everyone, right? The right. only difference here is x one, right? Um, that is the probability yeah. into lambda e to the power minus lambda x two, right? And up to x n. So what I'll get lambda to the power n e to the power minus lambda x one plus x two. Up to x n, that is the likelihood. Hmm. Right? This is a likelihood function. Suppose when I if when I take this example of exponential distribution, right? No. So right. Uh, basically, the distribution, the density is like this for each of uh, when x is exponentially distributed with some lambda. So then is we, that x to the power lambda or n? What is that? Okay, okay. Maybe I'll write down everything here, so it's better to. Fine. So suppose in this case, I said that some x is uh, IID hmm. exponential with parameter lambda. Lambda. What is the task I'm having currently to estimate lambda? Estimate for lambda, right? To find the estimate for lambda, right? Hmm. Th that uh, and uh, that is what actually it's lambda hat, right? Because it's not exactly the lambda Equal because lambda, lambda from uh, population, so it's like uh, estimate for this lambda, and that is denoted by lambda. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So there are let's say some uh, x one, x two, up to x n samples I have collected. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I have collected th the samples uh, from uh, the samples oh, yeah, yeah. only from this uh, distribution. Okay. Mm -hmm. So but. When I when I say it's coming from IID exponential lambda, that, what does that mean? What is the distribution of x one? It's also exponential lambda e to the power minus lambda x one. Lambda x one. Uh, this is a PDF basically, and uh, when x is greater than zero or something like that, right? So or x one yes. is when x one is greater than zero. And here it is lambda e to the power minus lambda x two. X two. Is greater than ah, okay. Zero, kind of like that, right? Hmm. So what will be the likelihood here? Basically, likelihood is a product of this density. All the so it is basically lambda e to the power minus lambda. Minus lambda x one x two x three to x n. Lambda power minus two to lambda e to the power minus lambda x n. Hmm. So the compact way of writing this is pi. I will go from one to n e to the power lambda to e to the power minus lambda x i. Correct, right? And what will be the product? Lambda to the power n, correct? Hmm. And e to the power lambda x one, x two, x n. What what will happen? 
it will lambda will be common and all the additions will be there. yes okay okay this is what like it's in not lambda n ah sir <laughs> this likely hard okay uh i wanted uh, so what is the method here maximum likelihood right so what what does that mean i have to maximize this take log and then differentiate likelihood we have to take the log for uh, means we we can is it oh, it's okay actually if you don't take the log also hmm. still you can find the uh, maximum because it's kind of a function right hmm. uh, what i'll do i just have to differentiate with respect to what here what is the variable here lambda theta okay <coughs> theta in this case okay but in, uh, by so for our example what is the variable here x lambda 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 right yeah yeah yes yeah, sorry because lambda. we need to find the parameter. lambda is a parameter the lambda is a parameter which is actually because x1 x2 actually these are the known values they are constant structure hmm. right So lambda is a variable, and I have to differentiate with respect to that and equate it to zero. That's what we do by understand uh, or by the knowledge of calculus, right? Mm -hmm. But here, uh, since this may involve this exponential or that kind of uh, things, what we do is we'll make it we take log. log. We take log, right? Mm -hmm. And log of l theta. So that will actually uh, what does log do? That actually uh, flattens out. the value right let's say 10 to the power minus 10 this uh, is very difficult when i take the log it will yeah, become okay. minus 10 into log 10 mm. which actually gives me on a linear scale right whatever value is there i log actually gives me on a linear scale mm. that's why uh, it's good to take log and basically and it's okay again minimize uh, so then if i take the log what will happen here Minus. So this will become uh, minus lambda x one x two to x n x n and what is it? N log lambda plus n log lambda. Correct, right? Hmm? So is where that? e to the power that e where it went? It is true. It's okay. Okay. You already forgot that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, you you have to take log of everything, right? Mm -hmm. So log of a into b is actually log of a plus b. A plus b. So log of lambda to the power n plus log of e to the power minus lambda. Okay. Okay. One to x n. Right. Mm -hmm. And this will actually and log n lambda. Log lambda. Mm -hmm. Plus, my or plus minus sort of minus lambda x one plus x two to x n, and log e will become actually one. One. So mm -hmm. that's why no, it so it's a natural log, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, and what then? What I have to do? Uh, I have to maximize it, right? Ha, so we have to derivate it. So one one another uh, way of looking at it is uh, minimize this function. And to minimize it, what I have to do? I have to take negative log. So you can actually take positive log also, and you can differentiate. But uh, in MLF, uh, sir has used uh, this negative log method. That is fine. So I have just taken a negative of it, and then I have to differentiate with respect to theta, right? So minus log of L theta. Um, What will be the differentiation here? And I have to equate it to zero. So therefore, mm -hmm. this will be minus n upon lambda plus x one plus x two to x n equals to zero. Zero. Uh, that gives me n lambda equals to. So, lambda will be or lambda hat will be n by ah uh, yes n divided by x one plus x two to x n. So basically, n upon this is actually a sample 
mean mean right? sir can you scroll a little bit up yeah okay so and upon yeah, it is one, one by sample mean is it yeah yes correct one upon sample sample Sir, this minus n by lambda I got. Uh, we take took the log, mm -hmm. and then this n one plus lambda where lambda is. What happened? We are taking this lambda to the other side. Yes, yeah. lambda will go to this and x one plus x two plus x n. This mm -hmm. sum will directly come to. Okay. Here, right? This is basically one upon sample mean, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. So this is for any exponential. Yes, like basically if any any exponential. Okay. 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 Sir, what are the means? What are the distributions that we can expect for calculating maximum log log likelihood for this? all all known one right? So the, so means for each one will have a generic form. Okay. Right? Uh, so. Uh, yeah, so those who are who want to leave, you can leave. I'll just finish in like maybe ten minutes or fifteen. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, it will be generic form. For this is generic form, but let's suppose. Okay, I'll just give you an example. Uh, probably. Sir, I have an example. Ah, okay. Means, uh, I have a question again. Ah. So it says that suppose you want to check whether coin is fair. The coin mm -hmm. shows heads with probability p each time it is flipped. Mm -hmm. Suppose you flip one thousand times and observe total of four hundred eighty-five heads. Mm. Then find the ML estimate of P. Fine. So you can actually think this as a binomial also, huh. or think this as a Bernoulli also, right? Okay. In both cases, you can find it out. How uh, you have to tell me? Like uh, in, I'll, I'll maybe I'll solve for one. You can solve for other. Go on. Uh, okay. So we can take like it. Uh, it's like binomial, right? Four hundred eighty-five times. So we can say it's the success. It's, so it's up to P you. P is so. equal to four eighty-five by some value. Okay. So let's say x is then x will be distributed as uh, binomial. Binomial is basically the sum of Bernoulli's, right? Sum of Bernoulli's. So yeah. let's say this is binomial, uh, and it's not PDF. It's a discrete random variable, so it should be a PMF, right? PMF. Yeah. Binomial with Two parameters. Binomial will have two parameters, right? Uh, P, One will be what? P and N. N. So P so, is like four hundred eighty-five. N and P. Uh, N and P. What is N? N is I don't know. Number thousand. 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 It is thousand, right? N and P I don't know P. P is four eighty-five, right? No, that is a sample, right? Ah, uh, okay. Four hundred fifty times we saw that, right? So that is sample, right? Mm -hmm. Every okay. This is this is not coming from any distribution or something like that. Basically, n n share you are using that also uh, it's it's uh, but that doesn't mean that doesn't matter on the population. But p here you have to find the estimate for p here. So you just have to solve it through. So p is basically you don't know. That's all hmm. right. And I have to solve hmm. it for. It. So what I have to do here is. Uh, Okay, basically, uh, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. I think this this cannot be find out from the binomial, I guess, because here the probability I can directly find out by four eighty five by six, right? So whatever. Mm, yes, I, I have to solve it by that. Bernoulli, right? Bernoulli p. Bernoulli p, right? Correct. And mm. each of the toss I will consider as uh, a sample. Here. A sample. Because uh, and then now now I'll say that okay what is the distribution for Bernoulli in general? So x will be distributed as or f x of x basically f x of x will be into one minus p. So why did we not take it as binomial? Uh, because it's uh, it's actually binomial. It's an actual answer. Or or I can say that binomial if I say that that thousand. And four eighty five, right? That is actually giving me n equals to thousand and p equals. It's not repeating again, right? Hmm. Generally, we we will find the estimates for that only, where you are just repeating the experiment like multiple okay. times. So, so we, we need to. Sample. So we do not need sum. We need to focus on every iteration, right? Yeah, because we you need samples to find the estimation, right? You cannot. Uh, Sir. Yes. 
sir but you said that uh, means there is no repetition but every time we toss the coin right so every time means if we define an event for tossing a coin and getting a head let's say then there is an iteration and then how we are what what it. iteration no no that's no no uh, what i'm saying is mm -hmm. that uh, okay what what was this uh, so when you have to uh, you know here what i have done is uh, I would, we, you you should have some samples with you right Mm, yes, are drawn from this distribution, mm. right? So when I say thousand and four eighty five, mm -hmm. then in that case uh, there is no sample, right? That's the only sample we are having. Yes. So there yeah. are no multiple samples. Mm -hmm. So, so be, be only basis of one sample, you cannot uh, find the estimation for the population, right? If mm. you are understanding my point, so here you just have to consider each of this thousand trials. As the samples, okay, coming from the Bernoulli, and then you find the estimate for p. Okay. Even though I know the what what's the answer, right? That mm -hmm. is the answer, but still, mm -hmm. uh, I'll so solve it through this process. Uh, but you know anyway directly, so fine. Yes, yeah, p is this, and one minus p, when uh, it's having success and it's having, uh, right? So x equals to zero or x equals to one, suppose. To one and it's x equals to zero. So, what is likelihood uh, question? Uh, it will be multiplication of values, okay. right? P to the power how many times? K times. Four eighty-five. Four eighty-five. Basically, four eighty-five. 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 Five, 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 one, five. Right. Five, so you can actually keep it like this also, like in generic form, or you can uh, add the values also. That's fine. So let's say I'll say this x and n minus x. Mm -hmm. So what is log theta or log of log theta? It is log basically x minus log, log p minus of. Okay. We'll take minus I'll take, so minus x log p p into minus n minus x n minus x. Uh, log, log one minus p. Fine. Now we differentiate. Now differentiate uh, with respect to theta, or with respect to p here. Uh, so minus x by p. So this will be minus x by p, minus of and minus x by one minus p. Minus p into minus one. Minus one. Into minus one. Right, and that I have to put it to zero. Uh, so here you'll say minus x upon p, or I'll say okay. So what? So I took like numerator and denominator. X upon p it equals to minus x upon or minus p. So here I'll get what? Sir, I have x a question. One minute. Minus p x and into p minus and x right. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, px, right, sir? Ah, here px. Right side? Right side is? So things will cancel. Okay, px, px. Px, right. So mm -hmm. this, will, this will get cancelled. So I'll remain with ps, what? x divided by n. So basically, x is uh, 485 and n is 1000. So p hat will be point four eight five. Or Sir, you can here uh, you wrote like my negative of uh, n minus x one minus p times negative of one. So if we multiply negative of one with the previous, then we should get plus, right? So if we shift, we should get a negative value there. No, you are shifting the minus x by p. No, no, I am saying like negative minus one is there, no? And previously also we have a negative sign, so negative times negative should be a positive. Yeah, that stays one side positive. Here it is minus one x, right? So okay. Is, this let's say minus x by p, mm -hmm. negative and negative will become plus, right? Mm -hmm. Plus n minus six upon one minus p equals to zero. This term is going that side. This will oh, become okay. n minus one minus p equals to x by p, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, so. So this is how you have to do for Bernoulli. 
so we saw for exponential and bernoulli yes so you can do it for anything like any any distribution you take same so important thing is you have to uh, know the pdf or pmf can you show that, the normal we can do that also so let's say what is uh, okay first of all can you tell me what is the pdf for normal one upon root 2 pi right yes sigma e to the power minus half x minus nu to the whole square upon sigma square right 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 suppose we have n uh, samples suppose x1 x2 x3 x3 to x3 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so in that case what will be the likelihood equal to uh, let's say root of 2 pi to the power n times n yeah. sigma is also uh, what is basically sigma suppose because x we, we cannot do it for like we have to find two parameters here, right because x right. is let's say it is normal mu and sigma mu and sigma we have to find sigma square so you you can actually uh, if you wanted to find for two you hmm. just have to uh, make one constant and then uh, do it for one like that right, right? so consider okay. this sigma square is known to you this is some constant okay already hmm. and we are going to find for mu hmm. here we are not going to find for sigma we are going to find for mu in that case what i have to do sigma is constant sigma trip hmm. sigma is constant so it will be sigma to the power n right so yeah. basically i'll say that it is 1 upon root 2 pi sigma right 2 pi 1 upon root 2 pi sigma constant to the power n fine okay and here uh, what what i'll get e to the power uh, minus half right or I'll say one by two sigma square common, and what I'll so mu is actually uh, not constant here, right? So basically, it is x i minus. So uh, how it will look like x i minus mu? So you should have. Hmm. Or you need a summation. Uh, you can do summation. Okay, here I think see we need summation here. Hmm. Right? Hmm. Correct, right? Yeah. Yes. Just think about it. Like, is this correct, right? So correct. Because one. each time we will have like x one minus mu square plus huh. x two minus mu square plus x three minus mu square, but mu will be the same. Ha. Huh. Only changing mm. is x i, right? Mm. Okay. This is my what? Uh, likelihood and basically, uh, right? And now if I take negative of or maybe I'll take log of it, log of l of theta, right? So can I say this is in, this entire thing as constant? Yes. So yes. Basically, I'll say this uh, entire thing as constant. So uh, we don't have to worry. So I'm just uh, including this in. Okay. Right? Hmm. So this constant into uh, this. So this will basically will be minus half sigma square summation say minus mu to the whole square. And what is it here? E only, right? And you have taken I, log. Yes. Okay. It will become one. one. So minus one. Yes. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I think I will. Yeah. So log of constant is zero. Log of constant is zero. Uh, but the thing is, uh, I sorry, just. Okay. Um, e to the power mm -hmm. let's say c one upon two sigma square here c minus square right. Is it correct? Mm -hmm. Sorry, so you are not taking that particular thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, we cannot take hold that yes, whole yes. thing C so, and in, one upon or root two pi is only constant. Sigma mm. power n is one upon sigma power n is not constant. No, that is also constant, right? <coughs> why, why, why I cannot take the constant? So, so sigma we cannot take the constant. Right? 
no no we, we have assumed for we are saying that it is it is given to me it's already there okay in that case i am uh, making it constant i'm i'm just uh, no i'm just make, making sure that uh, this no, will work or not so this part i'm not telling this part the one upon root 2 pi sigma whole to the power n part ha ah, that is okay that is okay uh, here one up sigma is not constant no? sigma to the power one upon sigma to the power n is not constant so that is going to be constant okay uh, okay this this don't worry about this that is constant i am worried about here only the summation part if it is coming correct or not that is my problem uh, so why 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 you are not saying this is con- going to be constant sigma to the power n So, 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 so if I this to be same, okay, I can do that. I guess, and right. So let's say if I take, uh, I have taken log of this. Huh. Sorry, sir, because yeah. uh, mu, we find the estimator and uh, sigma and mu both are estimated. Correct, correct. So that's why I'm not. Going. Correct, correct. Uh, you are saying is correct, but what I'm saying is you cannot find two parameters uh, at the same time. So you you have to find first parameter by treating another parameter constant. Okay. Right? So in this case, we are saying that sigma is constant and mu is unknown. We are finding for mu here. Okay. Oh, okay. So log of this will be what? N into let's say uh, log of this constant, right? And plus uh, or plus or I'll say minus one upon two sigma square uh, summation of x i minus mu to the whole square, right? Hmm. And uh, so when I say minus, so minus, and this will become plus. This correct, right? But log of any constant is zero. Zero. Right. So basically, I'll get what one upon two sigma square uh, summation of sir, it's be minus. What is one? What is minus? One upon two sigma. अच्छा आप ले minus ले. So okay. right now. So you have taken minus everywhere, right? Minus yeah, equal. Right. Change. So. so Uh, summation of x i minus mu to the whole square. What I'll do is I'll take, uh, or maybe I'll expand this bracket. What will happen? This is x i square, right? Mm-hmm. Basically, it is x i square minus mu square two mu x i mm-hmm. plus mu square plus mu square, right? Uh, this is minus log of l of theta. What I have to do next is, I have to differentiate with respect to uh, here. I, I have to differentiate with respect to mu and equate it to zero, right? So if I do that, it will become one upon two sigma square. And differentiating this will be what? Uh, this this like x i will be constant, right? So it will become zero, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is going to be. Uh, Minus two, mm-hmm. and anyway, this is going again to be zero. So I don't have to worry now. Two uh, is also going to be zero anyway. Uh, but here two x i. But mu is where it is good. Okay. First will go zero minus. So why would the okay. minus okay, okay. negative two mu x i become zero? Mu is still there, right? Yes, sir. Mu we are. Ah, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, this will be minus two, two x i. Hmm. No differentiate after differentiation plus two hmm. mu, and all actually will be in some action right here. So hmm. uh, summation of this goes to zero. I'll take two common and uh, that will become zero anyway. Correct. So this will hmm. become what minus of summation of x i plus n mu equal to zero. So basically, summation of sure n mu 
sir where where did n u come from because summation right this okay okay, okay okay some okay. mu yes, n yes, times yes, it will yes. become n mu yes yes and summation of xi will becomes uh, n into mu so, so basically uh, mu, so mu had will... then n times negative n times xi we can't write what is it we can do right other side xi xi are basically the values right mm -hmm. you see like 485 it's like uh, 1 2 3 like 1 1 1 1 1 like mm -hmm. right so we can do this okay so basically uh, the parameter for normal distribution is basically what a sample mean what right this is sample mean right sample mean no okay where okay. where your structure can you tell me this? okay maybe if you uh, if you want i'll just tell the, the differentiation portion okay Okay, so do we, that. We did it for the normal distribution, right? Yes, yes. And that is also coming as sample mean. Okay. Nice. Okay. So, so everywhere it's sample mean only. No, so no, no. For exponential, we have seen right. It is one upon sample mean. But that means one upon lambda. So somehow it should relate. That is there, right? So that's why that uh, uh, that theorem was having or that method was having the limitation, and hence we move towards the uh, Bayesian estimator, right? Okay. okay. So okay, so minus here is fine, right? Until this point is all of our uh, are okay. One upon two sigma square uh, summation of psi minus psi minus mu to the whole square. This okay? Until this point, everything is fine. Yes, yes. Okay. So this I will say h of theta. Okay. Or in this case, I will say h of mu. Right. This is the parameter I have to. Fine. So d by d mu of h of mu, I have to equate it to zero. Fine. Is okay, right? To to get the minimizing, like we are minimizing this, right? So basically, I have to differentiate this. So uh, d by D mu of one upon two sigma square summation of x i minus mu to the whole square is equal to zero, right? Is fine. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, and since this is constant, so can this will go to the zero directly? Because I can I I I can take this constant out of out of the derivative, right? So this is yes. one upon two sigma square d by d mu of x i minus mu summation. summation of x i minus mu to the whole square equal to zero. Basically, this can go to multiply to zero and it will become zero eventually. So we are remained with this d by d mu of summation of x i minus mu mu whole square zero. So there is one way, either expand this or you can directly do the differentiation. What will be the differentiation? Two times. After uh, so actually, I, I was seeing something else for the last one minute. So, uh, what did you do after like we found the estimator as to be the sample mean? Is okay, I'll do that. So I'll do that here also again. Is there some other question? No, same same thing. Same, same thing. Yeah. Because I think some of you don't understand this, so I'm just writing it again. Okay, okay. Fine, right? Right. So we have started with this, correct? Then we have taken the log. No, obviously, like already we we have studied it, but then you know, kind of remembering it is the issue. So yeah, I understand. Discussing it now, it is coming back. He, yeah, uh, all this was there. Yes. So what is the differentiation here? i can actually expand this term or i can uh, basically take the derivative to like this and make it to zero right mm, yes uh, again this two can go here and i'll remain with this summation of xi minus u to the zero right so basically this becomes summation of xi minus summation mm -hmm. of u right Okay, so summation of xi will remain as summation okay. of xi, but summation of mu will be 
because uh, the summation is from i equals to 1 to n basically mm -hmm. i am summing mu n times so i'll get minus of n into mu equals to 0 the summation of sir why can't we have like summation n times xi what is it no no x, x, x is are, it's changing no okay like x1 x x1 x2 x3 mm -hmm. x1 x2 x3 are different Summation but mu three. remains the same so yes. we can okay. yeah so mu will become now summation of xi divided by n and this mm -hmm. is mu hat and this is basically a sample, sample mean but sample but this sample is coming from normal distribution previously we have seen that the, for exponential distribution it was n upon uh, x1 plus x2 or n upon summation of xi which was one upon sample mean but that sample was coming from exponential distribution exponential so sample mean means it is mu uh, mu is actually a population mean right sample mean is x1 plus x2 plus x3 so plus we are mean. estimating the population, population. Mu from the sample mu uh, yes mean yes the mu right yes so here basically we are saying that the population, population mean, mean is equal, is equal, to, equal sample. to sample mean that is our uh, uh, you know estimate ML from ML this estimate. method yeah from mm -hmm. this estimate method but we have different different methods so there are method of movements there is a uh, bayesian estimator whichever method will take it to the closer to that one right we don't know actually this is so, like so our so sigma game. is the variance is difficult is it yeah, variance is not difficult wasn't this sample mean taken as uh, n minus 1 like if, if n is the population size uh mm -hmm. Actually, you see, uh, mean sample mean and population mean, right? When you see the basic basic statistics, also they are always the same. Only there is a difference when uh, you calculate the standard deviation, right? So that Only is root of variance. Of variance or stand, uh, yeah, standard deviation, right? So yes. that time you divide yes. it by n minus one. But, but for me, uh, even if you calculate sample mean or if you calculate population mean, uh, there will be a, like the denominator will be n only. Always same formula. Okay. Now this mu hat is sample or a population? Mu hat is actually an estimator. Okay, so mu hat is basically the estimator for population, population mean. Okay, and we are saying that this okay, population mean is equals to sample. the sample okay. mean. Okay, basically, right. Uh, okay, so, so one uh -huh. sigma sigma. So you can find out how how to do this. You just treat now mu as constant, mm. okay? and sigma as a variable. In this case, what will happen? This likelihood will be the same, right? Mm. Yeah, the first part will remain, right? But but when you find this log likelihood, uh, then this is not going to be constant. So this is right. not going to be zero. In that mm -hmm. case, you have to write one upon, or basically, you can do one thing. You can actually remove this root two pi, right? Mm -hmm. Because and uh, you will have okay, maybe uh, I'll give you that log likelihood maybe, and you can find uh, or you can differentiate later on. Right? So mm -hmm. let's say likelihood of this will become what one upon uh, root two pi sigma, correct? Right? Or maybe I'll say one upon root two pi to the power n. Now, sigma is uh, going to be what? One upon sigma to the power n, correct? E to the power minus half sigma square. Uh, basically, here it is summation of xi minus mu to the whole square. Is it fine? Right. Yes. Okay. Now, when I say minus log of L of theta, so here, uh, this basically will be n log of, or first of all, I'll find log of L of theta, right? So n log of, what is it? Uh, 1 minus log of root 2 pi, right? Is it okay? Oh, or this fine, right? Is there a, basically, uh, okay, log of, one upon x is what? 
negative no. log of x actually that's that's the thing right or mm -hmm. one minus so basically you can find so log of 1 upon root 2 pi is basically minus minus n log of root 2 pi correct no correct okay uh, then here plus log of this this term right log of this term but what is the log of this term minus n minus n log, log sigma. sigma log sigma so the first part will become zero is it this becomes zero okay. correct okay okay and uh, next will be what again this will become plus, uh, minus uh, one upon two sigma square summation of xi minus mu whole square log of e is uh, actually become one so minus Why log the first part become zero this log of any constant is zero right okay. so root 2 pi basically is a constant log of a constant is zero uh, okay sir sir sorry okay That's log fine. of a constant is zero. oh no 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 i'm sorry i'm sorry okay uh, basically log after, after zero okay, no okay. it it will become zero after differentiation actually okay fine i yeah. just i did the mistake here okay fine so this is uh, but after the differentiation anyway because there is no sigma term there you mm. can neglect it here itself that is fine i'm sorry i just directly did that but that's fine. so negative of this would be n log of root 2 pi plus n log of sigma plus 1 upon 2 sigma square summation of xi minus mu to the whole square now you you I think this has h of theta and differentiate this h of theta uh, or theta in the sense it's here d by d sigma of h of theta right and equated to zero so this this becomes what uh, so when i differentiate with respect to sigma the first term will become zero the second term will be what n divided by sigma sigma here minus 3 minus or 3 or uh, what is it like it will be sigma to the power minus 2 right so this will minus 2 minus 3 divided by right so minus 3 divided by 2 sigma square or 2 sigma cube minus 2 right sir? oh sorry minus 2 yeah minus 2 divided by 2 sigma cube right differentiate right sigma yes Yes, sigma or sigma? Ah, okay. sigma. Sigma. Yeah. You sure, it's sigma or sigma cube. No, sigma. Sigma. You integrate, you will get sigma. Oh, sigma cube. Minus two, minus two times. Ah, yeah, correct. So. No, no minus three. Correct, correct. Three, three, three. One minute, one minute. Okay, I'll do that. Sir, <laughs> so, sigma square. We take. Okay, the one by two sigma, sigma to the power minus two, right? Basically, I have to differentiate this, so it is minus two. Uh, sigma, minus sigma to the power minus three. Minus three. Minus three. Yeah. Right. So, okay, so this becomes minus two upon sigma cube, right? Mm -hmm. And okay, basically this term remains as it is because this constant so x i minus mu to the whole square will becomes to zero. Okay, now I can directly write so as this. Correct. Uh, two two will get cancelled. So I remain with this. One sigma will get cancelled. Sigma square. So sigma square basically becomes summation of xi minus mu to the whole square divided by n. And I, I I will find out for the sigma square directly, right? Instead of finding for the sigma, this is the estimate so would it be negative or okay was the negative sign in i have removed okay i okay. did one step in between right so this also comes like it is a sample variance yes this actually maximum likelihood method doesn't give any different and generally this is correct only so basically you see right if you randomly pick the correct samples basically mm. you will find the sample mean equals to the population but it's okay but uh, like, there are other methods which are the prior right so prior like how was the prior information was there and 
based on the prior how your estimate is changing that is coming in bayesian estimator sir but it's not binomial here. binomial thing means for binomial distribution again we will have sample mean as our estimation you can find it out right so okay i i don't remember anything actually mistake like, mm -hmm. i'm just finding out start for okay but this is okay yes sir yeah so i think now you can find it for any other distribution uh even poisson or any okay. poisson also will come is any any distribution any non distribution <laughs> is there <laughs> Here we will ML. We will concentrate only on normal or what? ML you can no 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 any, any any distribution. All Flex all distribution. gamma also. No no not gamma. Uh, basically uh, Bernoulli binomial uh, Poisson. Uh, you can go for geometric maximum, uh, normal exponential and uniform. That's it. And all all formulas are available, right? In stats two, that instructions will be there, no? In stats two. Oh, but, but we uh, have to calculate that actually. Yes, we do. So we want to find this and understand what will be the estimator, right? Whether so you wanted you. Be, what do you think? Like you, you can do one thing. You can just find out all the ML estimators and uh, remember all of them. Basically, uh, see is sample. Is there a list somewhere? Most, most of the I don't know, like but but most of the distributions, the sample mean is a. uh you know it's it's a parameter for actually that uh, distribution okay sample mean most of the parameter only exponential uh, i think it is not there geometric also i guess uh, it is the same so it's be better you can just find it out no yourself you have time mm, this we will remember and... it but i don't think it's a difficult process right to like maybe it will take five minutes only yeah But you have to write it like clearly. If it is very messy, then you'll get confused with the parameters. Okay, so I think still I didn't complete the Gaussian mixture models. Okay, uh, is it is it okay if I do now itself or you yeah, want yeah. it tomorrow? I think I think you can continue today. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sir. Okay, so basically I'll take. Okay, so. So Gaussian mix. How much is left? Like Gaussian mixture model. After that, how much is left? Uh, all inequalities and central limit theorem. So is it okay if I do Gaussian mixture model tomorrow and uh, today yes, we sir. do okay. inequalities? Because uh, yesterday what happened was like means we did a whole two means more than two hours class, right? And there were a lot of concepts, so I had to revise back again. Means it got mixed up together. So uh, what we'll do is we'll do some inequalities at least three, three inequalities, mm -hmm. and uh, central limit theorem. Gosh, uh, probably will tomorrow. This is CLT we have studied before, right? So we can yes. do that. Yeah, that's all. Then well, the new concept, the Gaussian mixture uh, model. We'll do tomorrow. We'll do tomorrow so that everyone who is like missed the class or they have to go for another class, they will. Also yeah, they can come. Yes, fine. That's good. So we'll do inequalities. So one of the important inequalities, Marco. Okay. So what is Marco inequality, and uh, for what variable this inequality holds true? For positive, only positive random variable. What does it mean by positive random variable? The range of that random variable is positive. Right, so x cannot take zero. negative values. It cannot take zero also, or no, it can take zero, but it zero. cannot take negative values. Right. Okay. So it can take zero, but it cannot take uh, negative. Uh, what what it gives me? Uh, uh, it gives me the upper bound or lower bound. It should be upper bound, right? Upper bound. Upper bound is the probability, right? So suppose. Uh, okay, the formula is probability that x is greater than or equal to some number t is less than or equals to expectation of x divided by t, uh, which is, or I can say that, which is equivalent to mu by t. Right? Maybe I can write like like this. Probability that x is less than or equals to t, or sorry, greater than or equals to t 
is less than or equals to mu by t. So what does that mean actually? If you go away from the mean, what will happen? The probability of getting that random variable, right? It's decreasing, basically, right? Yes. yes. Because so if if t is larger, right? Mean, mean is constant, right? So if the t is larger, what will happen? The probability of uh, that number, like x will take that number, will reduce. Understand? What is t? T is some number. Suppose okay, or maybe see, let's say instead of t, I'll say let's say c. That is what you have seen, right? Okay, I'll I'll show you on the pictorial representation, or maybe on linear scale. Suppose there is this line, okay, and this represents what? A random variable x. Hmm. Uh, basically, that means it is taking all the values, of, like the the, the so values taken by. Comparing the probability basis, the distance from the mean, right? Yeah. So yeah. The, okay. So what I'm saying is, correct. Correct. You are saying this correct only. So this is the, the probability of something uh, greater than whether they are near the mean, correct. greater than mean, or less than mean, right? Correct. So basically, let's say this is mean here, okay, of the random variable. So mm -hmm. random variable, let's say, is taking one, two, three, four, five. Okay, these are the values it is taking. Suppose, right? And their mean is three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it is saying mm -hmm. that if you go away from mean, what the probability that x is greater than seven is equal to what? Seven by or three by seven. Oh, okay. Or understanding. Mm -hmm. So, so you can see on this number line itself if. Uh, what so is the C probability more than mu? It cannot yeah. be near mu or less than no, it, mu. It's, so that is what because since it is one sided, right? It's we are just considering uh, positive random variable. This is actually giving me one sided bound. It's not no. giving me the two sided. But two sided can be positive. So C can be less than mu also, no? Then also C is positive. But then you have to change uh, the things, right? So then you have to tweak that uh, inequality here. So for that, actually, we have this uh, mm -hmm. uh, Chebyshev. So what you have to do, like, if it is C is less than mu, what will happen? Right. Then? You will get probability greater than one, right? So suppose. No, no. Right? You want to find the probability greater than C, hmm. but C is actually less than mu. If then... C is less than mu, OK. So if C is less than mu, then this will become greater than one, right? This. Yeah, C cannot be less than mu, right? Correct. Right, right. It will be greater than 1. And that is not possible for probabilities. C can be either mu or greater than mu. Then, so mu. Then, yes. um, then C has to be more this than side. mu. Always. Yeah, it, it should be always on the right side. Right? right? Yes, yes. And it is saying that if you are getting, like, if C, C dash, so which, uh, so what is it, which probability is greater? Uh, uh, C is greater. So if I say probability of uh, C, so X taking C is actually greater than probability that X uh, is greater than C dash. Correct. Right. So actually right. it is, and hence it is providing only me the upper bound of the probability, right? So it is not giving me the lower bound. Mm. Right. So uh, this actually it is saying that how much away you are from the mean. But that should be always on the right side or maybe positive side. So here x should be so or c should be always greater than mu. Fine. This is my Marco inequality. Basically. Uh, and this gives me actually this side, uh, this bound. Sir, for values uh, equal to mean or less than uh, mean, right? It is it is kind of trivial, right? That uh, uh, but like the probability that something x say x is uh, same the mean is five and x is saying that uh, x is greater than equal to three. Hmm. Right? So yeah, it is it is understandable, right? And that from there only it's actually uh, so how it is coming? You wanted to see like how this Markov inequality is coming. Yes, Basically, sir. whatever you are saying is correct only. That is intuitively correct, right? If you are going away from the mean, definitely the probability of getting that value is lesser, right? That is the intuition for us, hmm. correct? Hmm. And that is what the basis of this Markov inequality. It's not so. Let's say expectation of x is given by what? Let's say the, if it is a positive random variable, then it is zero to infinity x into 
f of x dx right uh, and suppose there is some c 0 to c hmm. x into f of x dx plus c to infinity hmm. i just what i did i have done i will just uh, said that like what what is below c and what is above c hmm. so below c is what below c i'll i'll, I'll make it as zero okay hmm. so this this uh, because i'm saying that this is going to be zero suppose okay this then this is going to be zero this one okay between zero to c let's say uh, there is uh, you, you are saying that is going not going to happen okay and because since we wanted to find, like add the inequalities here i'm just doing this what will happen here between c to infinity Hmm. It is one. One, uh, one or uh, oh, no, no, oh, this is or, expected value, right? right so. Yeah. So, so here it is x into f of x dx, right? So I can actually value. write c times actually I can write c times c to infinity. Okay, there are some uh, integration rules you have to like check actually. So let's say dx expectation of x. And I'm saying that if this is greater than or equals to this, expectation of x is basically greater than or equals to c times, and what is this? This is basically probability that x is greater than or equals to c. And now, from here, I can say probability that x greater than or equals to c is less than or equals to expectation of x divided by c hmm. correct yes sir because i remember say, uh, that we discussed something like this yeah. that if we are taking c as mu hmm. or less anyway it is basically that saying that probability is going to be less than some less either one because we are taking it from something more than one and obviously probability cannot be greater than one so it is yes, like very sir. trivial we are not getting any information correct we are not going, we, we are just checking that how much away your data is right or yes. what is the probability that that value of that random variable taken uh, uh, is away from the b that is what given by markov inequality fine yes sir so let's let's talk about uh, but there was a limitation for markov inequality which was what it was only available for uh, or maybe for positive random variables so we have JB shift inequality. I don't remember it fully. Was it like the having some kind of absolute value? Thing? Yes, yes, correct, correct. So basically, uh, I suppose probability that it is away from mean. Okay. Uh, on both sides. So this absolute value gives me that. I uh, think which was not given for uh, you know Marco inequality. Upon d square. Uh, let's say here c. Let's see. Fine. And there are variations for this uh, probability, but uh, you can uh, like you can actually find upper bound also. You can find the lower bound also. The lower bound. Uh, how will you find out? Uh, it's just basically you have to. Uh, because this is greater than equals to c, right? You can just say that one minus sigma square upon c square. So basically, this actually, or greater than equals to c is actually uh, than equals to minus c square. Right? Okay, so uh, this is there. Uh, it's just uh, you can say that this is actually what is it the complement of each other if, if i wanted to find a probability less than something or this is actually giving me what uh portion right Let, let's say this x this mu so x minus mu greater than c is some some See, portion. Uh, not very 
Sir, like uh, x minus mu greater than equal to c is less than equal to sigma square by c square. Yes. Should sir. the second one be the opposite of it? To kind of yeah. Make... Okay. Sorry, you have uh, changed the sign. Okay. Uh -huh. I didn't see that. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, okay. So that means how much like uh, we are getting an interval here, right? So within that interval, if it is outside the interval, what is the probability? Okay, and if it is inside the interval, what is the probability? So outside will be sigma square by c square, inside will be one minus sigma square by c square, right? Previously, what you we used to do is we're just taking how much how much it is away from the mean, right? That that the value taken by the random error. What we are seeing here in this interval, uh, like if it, if it is closest interval to the mean, right? Then the probability will be higher, right? And if it is uh, like the, the interval is it's too far from the mean, then your probability will be lower. And far uh, for like or or this interval will be calculated from where? Like what is it? The variation, right? And that's why here it's coming variance. Okay, so sigma square is basically the variance of x. Okay. Uh, there is one more uh, inequality, uh, actually, of of being uh, inequality. But uh, okay, for that, uh, what you do is you just basically uh, think. First of all, think about these two equal inequalities first. Uh, Marco and Chebyshev. We will see that inequality later. One more. Yeah, uh, we'll, look at the weak law of large numbers and CLT. CLT will, will weak law of large numbers. Do you need me to say because weak law of large numbers is basically it's a Chebyshev inequality only, right? So that is giving me uh, uh, the uh, is this is a different name for Chebyshev, right? It's, it's not it's Chebyshev not. only since Chebyshev inequality is not giving me uh, uh, you know this is weak law of large numbers because once the uh, if you if you go uh, if your values taken by the random variable becomes larger. Uh, then this uh, will not give me the correct values of probability because you, 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 what you have to do is maybe you can just watch the lecture of Anderson's lecture, right? That central limit theorems, we call of large numbers. Basically, if 30 minutes of lecture is there, maybe you can check that one. Okay, sir. Right? Because it's like discussing that, it will be like then you have to connect a lot of dots. Uh, so it okay. will take a lot of time. So I'm just putting it here. Maybe you can watch that lecture of maybe 30 or 40 minutes lecture is there. But for that, you have to see the Marco and Chebyshev, or you, you must know what is Marco and Chebyshev, and then you can actually go for this uh, weak law of large numbers. Weak law of large numbers, basically Chebyshev inequality. Sir has shown one uh, graph there, I guess. Uh, he's saying that how these probabilities are changing. So uh, if they are changing for like so, after some point of time, right? The probability should should change drastically, but uh, because of uh, this inequality, it's, it's not that strong inequality. Uh, the the changes in the values of probabilities, right, are very lesser, even if for the larger numbers. And hence, it's not uh, good for large numbers. So there is one uh, important theorem, which is what central limit theorem, right? We'll see the problems on this. Uh, all central limit theorems inequalities and every, everything uh, but basically for theory maybe you will refer Andrew's lecture or maybe there are some uh, videos available on youtube you can watch those fine okay so central limit the theorem is what basically uh, if you have some i uh, samples drawn from iids okay? uh, those all the samples are from iid distribution some iid distribution right in that case uh, if the samples are large enough then what will happen uh, this distribution will close to what close to become what a normal distribution right normal distribution and Pardon? so uh, what did you say so if you have uh, like enough number of samples so if the sample size is more than 30 right this distribution will, uh, whatever the sample is coming from, like let's say if this it distribution will approximate normal. Yes. Okay. So suppose this is coming from uh, Bernoulli, right? If you have 
enough number of samples, uh, the the distribution of that, right? The sum of Bernoulli's, let's say, the sum of Bernoulli's will actually the let's say sum of Bernoulli's denote x one plus x two to x n. Uh, this y n will approximate to normal with mean mu sigma square. Or basically mean mu and sigma square. What is mu here? So if it is Bernoulli, let's say it is p. So what is the uh, mean of y n? N into p, right? And sigma square will be n into p into one minus two p. So uh, the it will approximate to the normal distribution. The sum of this, right? It will approximate to normal distribution with mean uh, that is basically equals to n into p because if it is Bernoulli. Suppose this x is coming from exponential. What is uh, the mean of exponential? One upon lambda. lambda. And what is the variance of exponential? One upon mm. lambda square. Square, right? So let's say y n is the sum of all this. What will be the distribution of n? One upon lambda will become normal. So everything will become normal. All yes, distribution. all distribution will approximate normal okay. distribution. And this is n by lambda. N by lambda. N by lambda or lambda only? Oh, sir, one upon lambda. Or... So okay. So expectation of y n will be equal to expectation of this plus this. So n times right. So this is n upon lambda. Fine. Now what what about variance? N upon lambda square, right? And this is actually is very useful because you can actually uh, make this y n into or this normal distribution into standard normal, right? How will you do that? You just subtract the mean. And divided by the standard deviation, this will become standard normal, normal variate, okay. right? And if you find the probability, and we know how to find the probability of uh, because this distribution is what normal zero one, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, all the prob the values of all these probabilities are uh, we know basically, so we can just find the values from there. Or maybe if so. Fine. we'll see the problems over this, uh, maybe by tomorrow, so that we will be able to understand uh, the central limit theorem properly. You understand, right? What is what is happening here? This, this, all the samples are coming from any distribution. Okay. If the large enough samples are available, what we can do is we can actually approximate that distribution to normal distribution we can make that normal distribution into a standard normal distribution and then we can find probabilities right we we'll see the we we'll see from some problems but uh, before coming to the so tomorrow session it's better if you just uh, watch this, uh, some lectures or maybe you just at least and because remember uh, some property like marco inequality they wish you i didn't cover it like uh, fully here, so uh, you, you just guys go through the maybe stats two lecture or maybe the MLF lectures also. Then you'll see some problems and uh, we'll be able to understand it properly. Okay, right. Okay, so I think yes. that's fine. Okay, uh, I think that's it for today. Uh, thank you for joining the session today, also. Uh, so, yeah. Bye. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.